So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for ways to figure out the blocking game on Silent here. Ooh, remove two. Took that last time, and I'd say that went relatively well. Silent has so many starter cards that uh, getting rid of a couple early on can be pretty juicy. Speaking of juicy, look at these arrangements of floors here. That's what I call juicy. So we can either have an early elite or not an early elite. One, two, three upgrades here. Only one, two. Got Guardian at the end. Always happy to see Guardian as our boss. Act one as the silent. Primarily, we're happy to not see Slime Boss as silent. We can just kind of breathe a, an internal sigh of relief, knowing that our beginning of our run will be a lot easier because of that. I don't think an accuracy would have done it, Josh Prox. Oh, fundamentally, that it, you know, we could have we could have done all the damage output in the world with that last silent deck, and it, it still wouldn't have kept us alive through the end game because you have to be able to survive the first three turns of heart going to that uh, damage cap, and there's there's no amount of additional damage that's going to make that more survivable for the deck. But your ankle says I find most of my A20 silent wins happen if I have some form of intangibility. I uh, agree. That can make a huge difference. That's one of the big ways to survive all of the nonsense of Spire's late game, particularly for Silent, who struggles to block otherwise sometimes. Oh, I hate when that happens on uh, Twitch Enigma Engine. It's so easy to accidentally unfollow somebody and not notice, but welcome back. Random rare card's pretty unreliable. I don't like the boss swap on Silent much, so I'm almost always going to trade six max health here to remove two. I believe Silent needs to remove one strike and one defend. Removing two strikes makes you very vulnerable to a bad draw order against Jawworm right away on floor one. It also makes Gremlin Knob a lot worse to deal with. So probably don't want to do that. I don't like this path quite a bit. There's a maybe opt-in for the Burning Elite if we get really, really strong. I don't know what we'd have to find for that to work. We'll take one event, four combats, upgrade, two more combats, and then by the time we get to the Elites, we should be easily able to kill them. We also get this shop with a fairly respectable amount of money. Although not as much money as this shop after getting an elite. Yes, silence block cards tend to have small numbers on them, which is what makes dexterity such a big game changer for the silent. Problem is, there's only one card for silent that creates dexterity. That's footwork. Everything else is dependent upon relics. Can't do any real damage there, so let's just block a Reno here. And this exact fight is the reason we didn't remove two strikes. So if you draw too many defends and enough strikes against the Jawworm, you can have a very, very bad time. Once they get to 10 strength or so, yeah, 22. I can't block, or well, I can't kill, rather. We're three damage short because we didn't draw the neutralize. So we'll take four here, kill next turn. And I'm okay with that. I think that could have been worse. Could have been better, but definitely could have been worse. Oh, and what a choice. Early Deadly Poison versus Leg Sweep. Feels like Deadly Poison gives us the damage we need for quite a while. Though Leg Sweep would be excellent block against the Guardian. Hmm. There's a block card you can get away with taking on floor one. It is Leg Sweep. Snahat, thank you so much for that tier one sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. And we did just beat a Jawworm. I'm not planning on fighting an Elite for quite a while, so we get many card rewards. Actually does make Leg Sweep very reasonable as a take here. I'm going to do it. Although that doesn't set me up for a potential Burning Elite kill. Two random upgrades for the low, low price of only 18 hit points. I'll make that trade. We get Survivor upgraded and a Strike upgraded, improving our numeric output fairly substantially. Shouldn't need to take any damage in this fight with uh, the draws that we have, the cards that we have.
good. Ten more gold. And I'm okay with a dagger throw as a first damage card. Dagger throw is a reasonable amount of damage. Nine damage. It also draws one, discards one, and that allows you to... One, cycle through the deck as if the card weren't there. It's not... doesn't make you cycle through the deck faster than if you didn't have the dagger throw at all. But it's kind of like the dagger throw is not there. One less card in the deck. And it also allows you to activate discard effects like Reflex, Tactician, or get rid of unwanted cards like Burns or Curses. 15 health. Not a problem, since I have these 9 damage cards. Here, we'll even do it like this. Hey, you're so welcome. Glad that YouTube helped you out for your A20 victory with all the characters. Always a delight to hear that the channel has enabled people to elevate their own gameplay and achieve more than they would have otherwise. That's what I'm here for, after all. Alright, pretty good damage output with the upgraded strike and the dagger throw. Flex potion gives us a bit more oomphage. And I do like an early noxious fumes. Really good card to pair with good defenses. And we have two cards that block for 11 currently, so I'd say we have fairly good defenses. The Sneaky Strike does pair reasonably well with the Dagger Throw. This is actually not that bad. Um, or we could pick up Slice for no nonsense, but I don't think I would go Slice here. I think it'd be a pretty tough sell to successfully defeat the Burning Elite. Possible. If I take the Sneaky Strike and we perfectly draw our cards on the right turns and it's not a Gremlin Knob. I think I'm just going to take the Fumes and we're not going to go this way. That sounds a lot easier to deal with. Enigma Engine, thank you so much for 14 months of support. I want to kill the one that's buffing. That's the one that will guarantee to attack for 11 next turn. Or I can just block. Let's just block. Here, you're weak. Good luck. Um, this one will buff again next turn, so let's actually put damage on to this one now. Kind of weird how that ended up working. Um, okay, I did get a kill, so we can go... Strike, Neutralize, Fumes. Hopefully kill on this turn. No, I'm one damage short? Okay, but we have a block because we're really good at blocking. Interesting. This upgraded Survivor has been really cool. Hmm. In a deck with this much block, a blur is a pretty reasonable inclusion. Five block and block is not removed at the start of your next turn. Card that's pretty good on its own, better in multiple copies. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Early Piercing Whale is also somewhat reasonable. Well, let's grab this Blur. We're a little bit heavy on defense at the moment. I'm going to upgrade our offense by upgrading Fumes here. So that we can more quickly kill things like Lagavulin and Sentries. A little worried about how we'll deal with a Gremlin Knob if we encounter one. But I don't have to answer that question just yet. This looks a little tough. Again, upgraded survivor is crazy good here. This is 1520, so we can actually just block. Sweaty handles, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the goozy sub club. One off from a kill there, huh? Probably want to go leg sweep fumes. Neither of these two will attack me next turn. See, I'm okay taking one here. Another first time subber, long time YouTube watcher. Just what I like to hear.
deck wants like health props. What a flying knee. I do think we want one more damage card. And this is the damage card I'm being offered. One energy next turn is not bad. I'll pick it up. Hmm. This feels like a must play fumes situation. 16, huh? Take six, go to 29. Okay. Not gonna play Flying Knee. Not gonna do it. To let up next turn, though. Thanks. Question mark. This is fine. Definitely don't mind being entangled here. Well, would have been nice to not be, but. Yeah, I don't mind not being anything, not being able to play attacks there so much. This is a bit worse, but I think we have a kill. Thanks to Flying Knee. Okay, that could have gone worse. We get a second Flex Potion. We're offered another Dagger Throw. Distraction or a Quick Slash. That feels pretty skippable. Seably TV, thanks for 37 months and that generous tier 2 sub. Three... Years plus. Heck yeah. That's right, Miramorphic. We traded 19 health for two upgrades and got upgraded Strike and upgraded Survivor. I'd say those have been well worth it. The Survivor upgrade in particular has been really useful. Alright, we get a Relic, we get a Shop, and then I fight an Elite with 29 health, two potions. I think we'll be okay. If it's Sentries or Legavulin, it should be downright easy. If it's Gremlin Knob, we have two Flux potions to do a lot of damage with. Trento says, when would I take Quick Slash over Dagger Throw? I like Quick Slash in situations where you have lots of energy to work with. Uh, so if you traded your starting relic for a boss relic and got a fourth energy, Quick Slash can be good. Or if you're just on five energy, period, Quick Slash can be really nice. Since the, the upside of Quick Slash versus Dagger Throw is that you end up with one more card in your hand after playing the Quick Slash than you do with Dagger Throw. So in situations where you want to play as many cards as possible, the Quick Slash can help with that. Or if you've got a lot of free cards to draw into, Quick Slash can also be good over Dagger Throw for that reason. Oh, I love Bag of Marbles here. Apply Vulnerable to all enemies on turn one when we're drawing more cards. Can I maybe get a damage bonus of some kind at the shop? Vajra or Sling of Courage? Oh, Waffle's pretty good. Glass Knife's pretty good. A uh, Footwork on sale, though. I really wish I could buy Waffle and Footwork. <laughs> Probably going to have to take the the footwork here. Based on how difficult it has been to get my hands on those otherwise. Could take a blade dance just to go with double flex potion. Probably going to take backstab though, given that we have bag of marbles for vulnerable on turn one. That's a free 16 damage to our enemies. I like that a lot. To pair with our pretty good block. Presidians, did you hear about the man who could cure people by working only on their feet? He was a very talented healer. The Cushion Relic, the Regal Pillow. Healing 15 whenever you rest, it's not a bad relic. I did rarely find it worthwhile to pay for the Regal Pillow. Certainly I wouldn't pay for it here, even if I was planning on resting at this fire, because I'd rather just buy the instant full heal from the waffle. But it's not a bad relic at all. Not a bad relic at all. It is these three. But I did get fumes on turn one. Perfect. Alright, well, I'm very happy with these as our enemy. I'll go fume. Hmm. Twenty. Twenty-eight damage. Twenty-eight plus fifteen is not enough, right? 43, so it'd be one health short of killing the middle one with backstab, flying knee, dagger throw. So unless dagger throw drew neutralize, that wouldn't work. 
In that case, I don't think I use the Flex Potion, at least not on this turn. We weaken the one that we're not going to kill. Play the Fumes and backstab the one that we are going to kill. Happy to see Survivor Plus putting in good work still. Next turn's going to be a bit awkward. Maybe next turn I use the Flex Potion to kill the middle one. Based on this draw, you know? Doesn't seem ideal otherwise. So I'm already full blocking. That just means this three damage goes wherever. I want to kill the middle one. Let's see. Assuming I draw a Strike, Strike, Strike plus. That's 21 damage plus 15. From one potion. Would be 36 plus another 8. From poison, 3 plus 5 is 44. So we'll exactly kill, which means I can neutralize here. five here. That's not too bad. All right. Five damage, one potion sentry. Not bad at all. That's kind of the power. Of, oh, man. Bag of prep, too. That's kind of the power of fighting your first elite very late in the act as silence. We had a lot of card rewards and such to prepare. Now we have two more cards on turn one, and I am strongly considering a Terror to apply permanent vulnerable to a target. But I could also pick up a Poison Stab or maybe Acrobatics here. I was making a bit of an assumption there, Pablo Drez. There were six cards in the draw pile. We were drawing five of them. Uh, because there were three strikes, I was guaranteed to... Uh, there were three unupgraded strikes and one rate, uh, plus strike. I was assuming the 80% chance that we would draw the upgraded strike, and then the 100% chance that we would draw the two unupgraded strikes. What well, happened to Bag Alert? You must be in the wrong stream, friend. You're thinking of Paparato. We do have a double Bag Alert, though. That is pretty hype. I'll grab a Terror. I think I'm very broadly happy with Terror, usually. And I could go come. Actually, I had my path wrong here. We want to go fight first. That way we can get a potion from the combat to use in the elite. Do I upgrade here with 24 health or do I rest for safety? Is there a third bag relic? I do not believe that there is. I'm pretty happy with this deck if I rest once and then upgrade footwork before guardian. Other upgrade would be what? We could upgrade backstab for six more damage. That's interesting. Ooh, that might be a really good upgrade. Give that a try. Yeah, not not bad. And we do get a good potion. Okay. Second copy of Blur. Let the Blurricade begin. I should maybe take Unload because of Gremlin Knob, but I think we'll be fine. We can use double potions turn one if this is Knob. It's not Knob, which means I have double blur. And I like it. Hmm. Not ready to wake up yet. We will play the fumes, which means the Legivalin will wake up next turn. If I'm lucky I'll draw the other blur. Ha! Easy. I retain 21 block. Good luck, nerd. Oh, 
Whoops, I actually could have played that strike. But I got to blur the block, and now I get to blur the block again. Given that I'm drawing leg sweep, let's play strikes here. Well, that went well. Jesus. Get a mob bank giving us more gold per floor. A second backstab. Actually, with the Bag of Preparation Ring of the Snake, we're drawing nine cards on turn one, and we have Bag of Marbles. I really like two backstabs. I don't particularly want a Blade Dance. I want way more free damage on turn one, so that I can kill things like a Slaver instantly, so that I can kill a Gremlin instantly, so that I can kill a Jawworm on in Act 3 instantly. I take four backstabs in this deck, says Trinto. I don't disagree. In fact, Mr. Andre, before that appeared, it was saying, with double bag, would you ever consider double backstab or more backstabses? I would go double backstab. I would go double backstab and a dramatic entrance here. And I think I'll go fire potion over flex potion? Yeah. Love this mall bank. Well, maybe not love. That's a strong term. Like this mall bank. Act 2 mutagenic strength would be very, very good. Definitely don't feel the need to upgrade before the guardian fight here. Uh, sorry, but to rest before the guardian fight here, we have the fire potion and double backstab to guarantee that this poor man is transformed very early on. And once the fumes gets down, everything will be good. Fumes and footwork basically on their own beat this boss. Transforming. Let's play more damage. Can never have too many backstabs. They say. I don't think that's true, but I like where your head's at. Commence the Blurricade. If we can draw Blur more frequently than once per turn, we can permanently retain our block surplus. And that's where Blur starts to get really powerful. It's like Barricade, except if you didn't have to pay three energy up front to get Barricade going, it was just attached to your defend cards. And that's pretty good. Got another Fire Potion, interesting. And in Venom Malay's grand finale. Very interesting. On one hand, in Venom is actually not terrible here, letting us further increase poison by playing our attack cards. On the other hand, I really like Malay's to reduce enemies' strength. Malay's pairs with defensive strategies really well. We're already able to keep surplus block, so reducing enemy damage while boosting our own block creates what I like to describe as a multi-layered defense strategy, exactly the sort of thing we were complaining about not having on our previous runs. Junt says, what happens if you have more innate cards than you draw on turn one? Great question. Innate's pretty fascinating in, uh, in Slay the Spire. Innate cards start in your opening hand. If you have more innate cards than your base draw on turn one, you'll actually just start with more cards in your hand than you should. So, for example, if you're just a regular defect, but you have 10 boot sequences, you'll start combat with 10 boot sequences in, in your opening hand, even though you only have a base draw of five. If you have more than 11 innate cards, then you'll get a random selection of 10 at the start of combat, and all the remaining ones will be randomly ordered on top of your draw pile. So... If you have 10 boot sequences and 10 backstabs, you'll get a random mix of 
backstabs and boot sequences, and then the first 10 cards of the draw pile will be more backstabs and boot sequences, followed by all the remaining cards in your deck. Grab a malaise. And do I want double fire potion over blessing of the forge? I think I do. Double fire potion is a very, very good act to potion setup. Just 40 free damage. I was wondering if we'd see this thing. I am in a good position to take a fusion hammer. We got the footwork upgraded. We got the fumes upgraded. We won't be able to upgrade further cards. What about Black Star? Bonus relics from elites. We are very well set up to kill elites right now. We have so many cards on turn one with free vulnerable. We can do so much damage. We have a malaise that shuts down the book of stabbing very easily too. This is a pretty good Black Star. That would allow us to continue to collect upgrades and we'll get tons of relics, which should accumulate into something. We won't exactly know the nature of the bonus strength that we're going to acquire, but uh, it, with large quantities of relics comes large amounts of strength, almost always. Hmm. That said, Fusion Hammer for more energy is pretty no-nonsense here. I agree the blurs would love upgrades. Terror and Malaise are upgrades that are nice, but note that these upgrades give us, guess what? Energy. And the Fusion Hammer gives us what? Energy per turn. So unless we're playing more than one of these cards that needs to be, up, you know, one, more than one card with an energy upgrade per turn, we're better off with the energy from the Fusion Hammer than we are with the upgrades. So having the four energy per turn is basically the same thing as upgrading the Malaise, right? X plus one versus just have one more energy in the first place. Kind of works out to be the same. So for that reason, I don't I don't really feel like we're losing out on all that much if those two cards can ever be upgraded. But then you also have to weigh, you know, the extra relics from the other elites, from the Black Star, and, well, that starts to look pretty tempting. Note that we don't have our green key yet. That does speak a little bit against the Black Star, but I I like where this is headed. Let's, let's try the Black Star here. I think we're going to do very, very well in Act 2 with the way that we've set up. And so if we can turn that into a lot of elite kills, and it looks like we could get as many as four, that's exciting news. One, two, three, four. Four double shops here for some reason. Probably want to go to the early shop. It's the only shop we get to path to this act. It means the Maw Bank says farewell a little early. Um, but I wouldn't mind removing another card or two, or maybe just buying another relic. I agree. I think we're okay against Grum Leader. Fumes helps a lot against Grum Leader. The blurs are going to be very good against Grum Leader too. As Grum Leader attacks infrequently for large numbers, we can really easily blur for that. The double blurs are also going to be exceedingly good against Bronze Automaton, so I'm already feeling good against our boss matchup. Would I take another footwork? Yes, but I'd really like to have more energy before it feels really good. Yes, we can go into a late shop, but that requires skipping the last elite. So we have to give up two relics. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times twelve gold. Two relics for about a hundred gold from Maw Bank. It's also one less elite that we fight. Let's see how the first few floors go. Perfect. I right, just die out, right, huh? Good old two birds fight. Note, if we play two blurs, we get to retain the block for two turns. Good stuff. Keep some more block for next turn. Exactly. Do you do it yourself barricade, but we didn't have to pay three energy for barricade. It's better than DIY barricade. It's blurricade. Excellent first fight. Feeling really good about the, the turn one we have. That block number just keeps going up. 
And up. Hmm. I wouldn't mind picking up an area damage card. Currently don't have one. Bit of gremlin insurance. Let's grab one. And the Red Mask Gang, I'm so happy to see you guys. Not only do they drop bonus money, but we're going to be able to slaughter them to get the Red Mask applying one weak and then one vulnerable on turn one. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Bear, yes. Uh, then we want to kill Romeo, right? I don't think I can also kill Bear. Maybe I should have. Use a fire potion here, actually. Let's do that. No bear. Yeah, it was a good fire potion. 30 gold and the red mask. We're offered a terror plus. Do I need two? I don't think so. Do I want a sucker punch? No. All right, well, I'm probably not going to go to this merchant. <laughs> That's what I learned. What do you got here? Apotheosis. Ooh. Could have taken that fusion hammer, just saying. Apotheosis is still pretty dang good. Upgrades all the block cards is the best thing that Apotheosis does. And we have so many card draws on turn one. That said, second footwork is here. That's pretty tempting. Clockwork souvenir is pretty good, too. Heavy Hank says, is it, ever, is it ever worth taking the Terror Plus and removing the unupgraded one? Usually it's easier to get upgrades than it is to get removals, so I would say mostly not. Maybe if we had, like, a, a Peace Pipe or something. Or if we had reason to want two Terrors, like if we had Dead Branch. If we had Dead Branch, I would have taken that. So how likely is Mutagen's Souvenir? Good question. Very unlikely, according to the current path. Only one more event coming. Don't think I would plan around that. Would more rather take the souvenir as insurance against uh, the vulnerable from heart, for example. But I think with Black Star, we don't need to worry too much about the heart. We should worry about the short term. I'm gonna grab Apotheosis and Cole One Strike. Not ready to take second footwork yet. The Parasite! Do I play Apotheosis here? I probably should. It means taking a little bit more damage on this turn, but it's going to be worth it for later. Otherwise, I could go Leg Sweep Blur. That's pretty reasonable. Retain one block. Add two more Weaken to this thing, but... Getting all the defense upgraded, getting terror upgraded, getting malaise upgraded, those all make a difference. Do it this way. Precisely. Cute. Duplication potion's pretty dang good. I'm now feeling even better about our first elite. And I do like a backflip. Block and draw. Yeah, I do like a backflip quite a lot. Especially with Apotheosis. More like a guacamole. Mm. Tasty. Guaca guaca. Fend or fumes here. Got malaise. I think taking two is reasonable. Though I do get to retain it, so I might keep the extra three as well. Alright, fine. 
Would I take another blur at this point? I would consider it. Don't know that I would necessarily want it. Make sure we don't uh, fall too far behind on offensive power. Easy to do here. Because it's once we've played the backstabs, it's pretty easy for us to draw a hand of no damage. It's not very good. Fight an elite before the first upgrade of something. It's a little bit worrisome. Reflex, leg sweep, acrobatics. Le Reflex is a trap here. Another leg sweep is also extraneous. We need to skip for now. And fight our first elite. All right, here's the the moment of truth. Are we going to be able to clear these elites? Easily enough. This is not the turn one I necessarily wanted to see. Lots of health on the board in the form of these gremlins, so we're going to have to KO them. Annoyingly. This is 22. So I play... Backstab, neutralize, terror on the Grum Leader, then they're not weak for next turn. That's a little spooky. Oh, I've got a two backstabs. I could go double backstab, neutralize her. But then I don't get to backstab the leader? Hmm. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, this is sad, but acceptable. Uh, I guess I do pot the malaise. We bring this from 11 by 3 minus 6. 11 minus 6 goes to 5, down to 3 by 3, multi-attack. Okay, that'll have to do. I'm not happy with that. I am not happy with that. And then this happens. I'm also not happy about. Guaranteed get attacked next turn? That's actually not that bad, though. Let's just blur up for this. Get attacked on purpose here. Twenty-one armor on this guy. Like, what? Hello? Double malaise really helped. And we kept the fire potion. You may live, wizard. Tell the others. We get meat on the bone and pocket watch. That's hype. Okay, I think with meat on the bone, I can upgrade Apotheosis here. Our hit points are at or below health at the end of combat. Heal 12. Pocket watch says if we play three or fewer cards during our turn, draw three more at the start of the next combat. Uh, next turn, excuse me. And I really like zero-cost block, this deflect. 
Give me that. Okay, let's upgrade Apotheosis. And let's just try to survive this elite fight. It is the Book of Stabbing. And we've got Apotheosis on turn one. You'll love to see it. Upgrade. Double blur. I want to keep any block I make next turn. Probably look to activate Pocket Watch next turn. We should probably use the Poison Potion right now to get the damage going. Right. Perfect. Draw lots. Already got nine blocks, so I can also malaise here. This is going to be terror. Footwork malaise. Uh, let's do math to see how much of a difference it makes. Currently minus four. Puts the Book of Stabbing at three base damage per hit, so it goes down to two. Two times four. If I play an energy first, they go down to four base. Four weakened is three, so three by four. Okay, so yes, we'll play Neutralize Malaise. Boop. Pamphlet of Stabbing. Nice attacks, nerd. Break the pocket watch on this turn. Pocket watch makes it even easier to keep the blurs going, by the way. One. There's another one. Two, three. Cute. Blur. All attack. Can just play three cards per turn and we draw so much. Oh yes. It's all coming together now, chat. Heal 12. We get the Nunchaku. Here's our energy generation. When we play 10 attacks, gain energy. Centennial puzzle. If we lose health, draw three more. Good stuff. Could take a deflect here, but we already have one. I don't think we need two. We'll get another relic here, or maybe the blue key, and then our third elite fight where we'll get two more relics. And I think this is all going to start to accumulate. Yeah, this deck improved so much just from two elites, right? And guess what? We have two more coming up before we even have to fight Bronze Automaton. The boot. It would deal four less unblocked attack damage, up it to five. Got bad news for you, boot. You're my blue key. See you later. All right, will it be Gremlin Leader again? Or do we get to dunk on the slavers? We get to dunk on the slavers. Good. A meager 11 damage coming from these two. This guy is super dead. Turns out the real key was the friends we made along the way. This does 16. We do neutralize. Let's do it this way. Uh, actually, like this. I can save this potion maybe for him. We go blur, blur, deflect, neutralize. Or I could go leg sweep, neutralize. Carry a little bit of, little bit of block over. And give myself blur for next turn. We'll play three cards on this turn, um, obviously. And I'll draw with Centennial Puzzle. And we'll also put our health back into meat on the bone range. Totally on purpose. Aw, oh, yeah. Get to draw ten cards here, because Pocket Watch and Centennial Puzzle are both going to chip in. Perfect. Got fumes down. Don't really want to shuffle the deck with all these cards in my hand. Hmm. 
perfect. Could have drawn all wounds there, but I'm glad we didn't. Werewolf 4K, thanks for the two months of support. You have a good day. Gotta love a boat thingy giving us block on turn three. Courier is here to make shops cheaper and restock. And we're back up to two potions. Skeet plan's nice with decks, but not good with pocket watch. Hmm. It's really good with the blurs, though. We're probably eventually going to abandon the pocket watch. Really high chance that it succeeds, too. Most of the deck is skills. I'll grab one. Nice. Take zero. Oh, take one. Fine. Be that way. Sixteen total block acquired. Three block that we can also keep with blur. It's perfect. Not gonna play any more attacks, we're just gonna let Pumes kill. Oh, I maybe should have taken four damage on purpose though. Shouldn't matter much. Piercing whale. An outmaneuver. Hmm. Piercing whale. Less valuable with a malaise. I don't think so. I think we want to avoid cluttering the deck too much. And the opposite of cluttering the deck is removing cards that are bad. Good. Any upgrades that matter at this point? I'm going to go ahead and recall. Got an upgraded Apotheosis in the deck. Last Elite. Same as the first one. It's Gremlin Leader. More like Gremlin Bleeder. Am I correct? Much better turn one this time. Same turn two, though. Ah, that went better. Good fight, Grim Leader. And yes, we get to keep this 18 block. It's so OP. Again, maybe wanted to take four. But I think it's barely going to matter. Paper Crane is here to make enemies who are weak deal way less damage. And Caltrops Plus is here to give us the additional damage that we've been looking for. Another offensive power that rewards us for blocking. Caltrops Plus is surprisingly relevant here. Expertise could be good too. I love this Caltrops though. Give me that. Flex Potion over Fire Potion has to be better. Slightly. I might actually rest here just to really make sure we get to go to the next act. Since we have an Apotheosis, none of these upgrades really matter that much. 
let's just give ourselves a little bit more health to work with so that we are minimizing our chance of disaster here. Not that I think we're going to need the health, but... If you draw Apotheosis turn one, it doesn't matter what we upgraded or didn't upgrade, right? Yeah, I guess the other best quote-unquote upgrade would be Backstab to give our uh, better turn ones in Act 3. That's about it. One, two, a three. drawing as many cards per turn as we can. Fumes and Keltrops are going to do most of the work on the boss. Is it already Hyper Beam turn? It is, but the Hyper Beam is only 33, so that's not really a thing, huh? Deliberately skipping out on card plays sometimes, because I want to keep drawing with Pocket Watch and keep stacking Blur here. Please be weak forever, thank you. Hyper Beam number two only does 40 damage. We're now at three stacks of blur. GG, Bronze Atomaner. Casual, easy 13 turn fight. GG. Top Matthew made, I would call that fight a bronze, a tum, a ton of fun. With all those blur stacks. Good stuff. Really good stuff. We want more copies of Noxious Fumes. We definitely want more ways to deal damage. The one copy of Caltrops and one copy of Fumes, not enough for a 500 hit point boss, as you could see. I don't think our base attack damage is unfortunately high enough that this Phantasmal Killer adds a whole lot to what we're doing. Again, most of our attack damage is double backstab. And then that's really it. So I'm not thrilled with any of these. Maybe Glass Knife for a little bit more immediate damage. Actually, yeah, let's grab a Glass Knife. Help me kill, like, Spire Shield and such. Interesting that we're offered Pandora's Box. I've removed most of the strikes. The defends are pretty useful with the footwork. I think I'm happier with bonus energy. We can either take plus one strength on all foes to give everybody to give us one more energy in every fight, or just bonus energy during boss and elite fights, which I think might be slightly more reasonable. Ultimately, though, with Paper Crane, probably doesn't matter much. Maybe the Philosopher's Stone is more broadly easy. I really don't think we suffer that much in, in hallway fights, though. So I think, I think these are very similar. Don't really want Pandora's Box. I would like more energy per turn. And I think the defends are just fine as they are. Let's take the Philo Stone. 
Do you know that we offer channel memberships now? Support the channel directly here on YouTube for as low as $5 a month and get awesome perks like a custom badge and emojis. But most importantly of all, I'll do exclusive Q&As, uploading a video response only available to members so you can hear your questions read in my buttery voice. Click the join button below this video to get started. Back to the video. Make sure I don't have any unfortunate incidents in our regular hallway combat. Let's look at our burning elite placement. Unfortunate placement does mean that we can't fight as many elites this act as we want. Also means we don't get to go to a shop. So I'm glad I spent my Maw Bank last act. We'll get to use the courier in act four. But overall, that's a pretty crappy act layout for us. That's the price of leaving your burning elite until the late game, unfortunately. Play a lot of cards here. Not gonna bother with malaise. Well, I guess I will actually. And then disaster, right? That's right. Well, at least it blocks for six. Cloud only blocks for four. Although it's fewer cards, that eh, doesn't matter. So that was uncomfortable. But now we're fine. I have 96 block. E wow. Fumes versus footwork here. Probably going to take the second footwork. Sneaky strike plus. Take the second footwork. We'll just rely on meat on the bone for some heals shortly. Kind of relic is the specimen. It's a rare relic. Used to be a boss relic a long time ago. This double escape plan is way better now. First boss is Donudeka. Yeah, definitely. Uh-oh. This fight could go awkwardly. I'm not going to play any backstabs this turn. Yep, here's the awkwardly that this fight could go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Okay, that's fine. Meat on the bone. Yes, let the Keltrops course through you. you fool. Perfection. Oh. Didn't draw a blur. 
hurts at times. Only gonna strike this thing if it's using the parasite attack on me. Otherwise, I have no reason to do so. This one. Unacceptable. Don't need none of that. Don the Red Mask, gain 222 gold. We'll get to spend that with the courier later. That's pretty exciting. Although, again, we don't have any shops coming up for a while. So is it really exciting? I'm not sure. Thirty-one, how rude. Heck. Oh right, paper crane. Never mind. Oh, this enemy gets very strong though. We gotta be careful about Ma. I need to kill it quickly. Ma increases both its strength and the number of attacks it makes with its multi-attack. So if we're not careful about that, could end up in a real pickle of a situation. Really big multi hit soon. Yeah, ten by five. There we go. That's what I was afraid of. Caltrop save me. by six. Bring it. Easy. Backflip plus or a corpse explosion. Oh man, corpse explosion. This will help a lot against uh, spear and shield. Not so much against heart. I guess a little bit against heart. Really don't feel like I need another backflip so much as uh, we need more poison. So let's take a corpse explosion here. Swap the skill pot for a block pot and skip all that. Paper crane putting in so much work here. It's truly absurd. What it's able to get done for us. All right, two more relics, please. That's the biggest attack he can muster. Pretty sad. Okay, well, rather than playing strike, I'll just draw more. If these burns accumulate, we could be in big trouble here. Okay, now it's doing damage time. Caltrop's also pretty good in this fight, actually. Get that in play. Cute. Cute. 
We get the full Caltrops damage if Nemesis attacks us on a turn they're not intangible. Xaxes. Get another boat thingy, block on turn two, as well as a strike dummy making our strike plus do slightly more damage. If we felt like we needed more damage, we could take another Caltrops. Although this is what? Five times 15. 75, right? Yeah, we need another Caltrops. That should be enough damage. This could be a super-powered Reptomancer. So I'm going to sleep. That way I can take 50 damage and still win the run. Uh, a bottle of Backstab. It is a super-powered Reptomancer. Terrifying. for next turn. Corpse explosion. Man, that almost worked. Actually, corpse explosion strike does kill, but doesn't kill the front one. Not immediately. So is it better to go Corpus Explosion Strike on the front one? Ten, yeah, it would be. What could backflip hit? Backflip could hit Apotheosis. But I wouldn't be able to play it. Also got block potion. I think I block more by playing defend than I block by playing. Malaise here. here. Didn't get fumes down yet, either. Let's see, we're in a bit of a pickle. I do have ten thorns. Okay. Let's do it this way. Take a bit more. slowly getting her through her kind of terrifying health total here. Though you can see the Caltrops are putting in kind of incredible work. And keeping that pocket watch 
very deliberately activated for the constant per turn draw. Pretty important. Eighteen, eighteen, sixteen. That sounds like enough. Matthew later says fifty two. Minus the poison. Yeah, that's it up. The scroll bar. Thirty five gold. Blood vial heals us two at the start of each combat. Ceramic fish gives me nine gold per card added. That might still be a few, especially with courier. We're offered infinite blades, thousand cuts, concentrate plus. I don't want any of these. I do like the healing too per combat though. And we'll use three max. It's fine. Greetings. all the things that exhaust so that as we draw through the deck the second time we'll be in much better shape. To make this enemy's attacks pretty pathetic so the amount of block required per turn very low. Poison for Catalyst to feel particularly worthwhile. Could take a third backstab there, but I think we're mostly past the point where additional backstabs are very helpful to us. So, none of the above, please. I think I'd rather have Shift Potion than Strength Potion for Spear and Shield. Transient shouldn't be a problem here. Just have to do good damage each turn. Unfortunately, Keltrops don't help much here. But again, I don't want to draw them again. So I will be playing them. sign of blurs. This turn could be a bit awkward. Nope, we block for so much. We're fine. Easy. Paper Crane also dramatically reducing Transient's damage output here. Easy. Could take a Deadly Poison. Do I want one more backflip? Yes. Hello? say spikers are definitely not the enemy who's going to fare particularly well against us. Poor guys. D 
Dex potion seems pretty good. And a backup copy of Malaise. Yeah, Dodger Roll is also very nice. But I think two Malaises will be very good. Go Dex potion over block potion. Okay. So we have a very defensively oriented deck. Damage a bit of a shortcoming, but I assure you double Keltrops are going to carry us through the late game here. Our defense is excellent dexterity, plus Paper Crane, plus Strength Down makes it hard for anything to do any real damage to us. I am going to upgrade the Keltrops. That way, if we draw this on turn one, I can play it for full value. Pretty important against the heart, especially. If ever there was a fight for Corpse Explosion to put in good work, it's Donu and Dekka. Although I don't think I'll be playing it on this first rotation through. Take a small amount on purpose? No, because I can use malaise here. Guess I'll kill Dekka first. Keltrops kills Dekka better anyway. Two, three. Don't play this. Alright, let's keep you weak. You can you. Didn't play the neutralize because again, wanted three cards there, so we draw well here. One more time around, if you're going to be like that. Get him, Keltrops. Ah, heck it. Break the rules there. Need to find Corpse Explosion soon. There it is. That means no blur here. That's fine too. Double Corpse Explosion. The re -explodening. Okay. Slow but pretty smooth fight. As you'll expect for most fights with this deck. It is a, a very slow-paced set of cards, but a very, very good one. Easy. Footwork. Backstab. Malaise. Main focus here is getting the powers in play. Time Eater is all about number of cards played. Every 12 cards you play, Time Eater automatically ends your turn. We want to make sure that we're playing not more than three cards per turn. That way, Time Eater's shenanigans don't affect us as much. I'm going to go Footwork, Keltrops, Keltrops here. 
and not play anything else. Time Eater is ultimately a test of how efficient your deck is per card. And the more efficient you can be, the better you'll perform in this matchup. Not that we're doing 30 damage from Thorns back every time Time Eater does one of these times three attacks. That is pretty quickly cumulative. We are going to need to get rid of these slimes. Just going to get rid of them now. Drawing through those over and over again is going to be burdensome in a way that I'm not prepared, not prepared to deal with. Not at all. All right, I'll play a few extra cards here. Put them to nine. This could get me hurt, though. One, two, destroy. Can I put Time Eater below half health on this turn? If I can, I should. That'll prevent us from getting attacked next turn. 260, yes. All that attack will be sufficient. So, Time Eater instead removes all debuffs and heals to half. Uh, let's Flying Knee so that I can bonus Malaise next turn. Bonus Energy Malaise. I need to play four here. No noldy but a goodie for Wooperman. How do you know when the Time Eater really enjoyed a meal? They go back four seconds. GG, Caltrops did basically all the work there, as it will continue to do. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all of this block power? You prepare your daggers, deal in at 2537. Have I been here before? Why doesn't Time Eater eat that watch? It's too time consuming. Why doesn't the Time Eater keep watches on his belt? Would be a complete waste of time. What does the Time Eater say when they want a snack? Can you lend me a hand? Upgrade Malaise here. None of those upgrades really matter. We have 699 gold plus the Courier. Which could lead to some fun stuff. Loving Calipers as an option here. The start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of your block. Sadistic nature is also interesting. Doing damage whenever we apply a debuff. Bonus damage on, honestly, most of our cards. I like the Sling of Courage for bonus strength during the elite fight, too. Remember, anything we purchase will have another item underneath it of the same type. So if I buy a Leg Sweep, there's a new skill there. If I buy a Relic, there's a new Relic. Chubba Dubba, thank you so much for the six months of support. 
Act 4 does add to your score, Flying Dutch Bag. The score you see after beating the Act 3 boss is your current score, but it'll continue to improve as you defeat Act 4, and you'll get a new final score at the end of the run. Kitty. I'll buy the calipers. There's a mummified hand. Oh, man. Yup. This deck has enough powers. I want that. And we'll take Sadistic Nature to go with. That sounds pretty useful to me. One, two, three, four, five, six powers? Six powers. Two footworks, two caltrops, fumes, and Sadistic Nature. Cool. Let's see how this works for us. Definitely going to play a lot of cards on turn one here in this fight. Really happy to have Neutralize. Ugh. Uh, what do you got? Okay, we'll at least get the puzzle draw, if nothing else. Can't say I'm happy with this, though. I'll neutralize here. Take 13. Free, so might as well. Leg sweep here. Block lays here. Blur, fumes, malaise. Should have uh, fumes before blur, actually, but looks like we're good here. I like to see. Wow. Talk about a close call. I guess we have block for this turn, but... They're dead. We get a Gremlin Horn, so we'll gain a card and an energy when the heart dies, as well as a Shuriken giving us strength for three attacks played. Can't say either of those are good. However, well-laid plans. Now that is a card we haven't seen all run, and that is a good card. Welcome. Only 44 health for this heart fight. However, with the boat relics, with a turn one blur, I think we're going to be just fine. So I don't want to footwork first. If I footwork first, I take damage from Beat of Death, and then Centennia Puzzle tries to draw me three cards, but I only have room in hand for two cards. So I'll lose card draw if I play footwork first. I'll play Deflect first. Then footwork. Then backflip. Send these. Okay. Probably Blur Leg Sweep. I might as well use this for the strength. Yeah. So keep 28 block until next turn, plus 14 from boat thingy. You only get five draw, that's okay. Because we're already blocking this attack. Let's play some powers, shall we? Caltrops first. Makes apotheosis for you, good. Apheosis, sadistic nature. I am going to play malaise here, so let's go strike first. So we do take five. 
on this turn. The heart does nothing to me. Get more Caltrops in play. Here I think I want to respect the power of the pocket watch. Keep drawing. I'm going to do 150 Thorns damage back. This is going to be the bulk of our damage in this fight. We have to survive, I think, reasonably three multi-hits from the heart. Wow. One, two, three. I'll have ten cards in hand, that's fine. Could remove all that strength. Let's do that. Seriously, though, the damage. Ten turns a weekend for you. Multi hit number three, still only a two by fifteen. Easy. Have some poison. Mr. Hart. Yes, Caltrops on. G G. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.